Welcome to the video lesson on climate and terrestrial biomes. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the factors that affect climate, and then we'll talk about biomes and highlight the 10 terrestrial biomes um, that exist on our planet. Let's start with our discussion on climate. Factors that affect climate include solar energy and the greenhouse effect, solar energy and the latitude on which you live, and heat transport. You'll notice what all these have in common is that they're all related to the energy provided to us from the sun. The greenhouse effect is the uh, effect of our atmosphere trapping the heat sh uh, that shines on us by the sun. Here we have the solar energy from the sun passing through the atmosphere and bathing our planet's surface with sunlight. Initially, a small amount of that energy is reflected back out into space, but most of that energy is transmitted through the atmosphere and falls on the surface of the Earth. The Earth's surface is heated by the sun and radiates that heat back out towards space. However, the atmosphere traps some of that heat and holds it near the surface of the Earth, and that is why it's called the greenhouse effect, because it takes place just like a greenhouse does um, that we use to grow plants. This has gotten a lot of attention because the increased amount of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere increases the greenhouse effect, and what used to be called global warming is now being called climate change. Solar energy and latitude, if we take a look at this picture, you're probably familiar with this concept from Earth science, is that depending on what time of year, the sun's rays hit more northern or more southern due to the tilt of the Earth. And by our approximate distance from the sun as to whether or not we are closer to the sun in our orbit around the sun or further away from it. So because of this, we get a varying amount of solar energy depending on the latitude that you live on the planet. And this greatly affects life's ability and the type of life that can live in that particular region. Lastly, a nice diagram to show heat transport on our Earth. Here we have the direction of... Um, currents that take place in our oceans based on the convection of hot and warm circulating um, the water um, in the oceans on our planet. For example, if we take a look at here, note this red line generally shows that heat flow is along the red line here. What you really can, can make a nice connection to is that this general shape of this arrow is the direction that hurricanes travel as they form in the North Atlantic and tend to come towards the East Coast and either will make landfall on the East Coast or then follow this general path upward as shown. Okay, So you get this cycling of the heat downward from the poles in the northern hemisphere and then the uh, becomes heated and then rises towards the North Pole like this. So you get this circulation that takes place. In the southern hemisphere it's just the opposite since the polar region is down south the uh, the water is moved towards the equator heated and then circulates in the opposite direction. So we have a clockwise flow of currents in the northern hemisphere and we have a sub, uh, counterclockwise flow of currents in the southern hemisphere. All right, let's move on to our terrestrial biomes part of our lesson. Really nice map with a key here showing the, the terrestrial biomes that exist on our planet. 
Let's start off by defining what a biome is. A biome is a regional climate community that has a unique set of abiotic and biotic factors. You recall from a previous lesson that the abiotic factors are all the non-living factors that contribute um, to a climate community, while the biotic factors are all the living factors that contribute to that climate community. Generally speaking, we have 10 accepted uh, terrestrial biomes on our planet, and the names of those 10 tend to fluctuate depending on your resource. And you should know that the 10 names that we're going to use are the 10 that are provided in your textbook. For example, taiga has a, another name that it's known by, uh, deciduous forest, chaparral, for example. They're all the same thing. They're just called differently. Uh, we're going to use the 10 that are used in your book. To get that started, let's take a look at the tropical rainforest. Here I have two pictures showing the key features of the tropical rainforest along with what's called the climatograph, which we'll learn more about um, in class uh, in the very near future. The climatograph shows, kind of a unique graph, shows both the temperature and rainfall as a function of um, month of the year. And it's unique because we don't often put two variables on the graph at the same time. But in these graphs, we do so that we can look at the relationship of rainfall and temperature for a particular region. Okay. Key features that identify the um, tropical rainforest include that they get at least 78 inches of rain per year. They are very rich in the number of animal species. In fact, this biome holds... Uh, the most uh, number of species of any biome on the planet. And they, ha uh, they contain tall trees that form a dense leaf reed covering called a canopy. And they have other plant life that has a layer of shorter trees and vines that is called the understory. And those are the key features for the tropical rainforest. We also have what is called a tropical dry forest. Here are two pictures showing the key features of the tropical dry forest along with a climatograph that matches its um, precipitation and uh, uh, temperature for that region as well. Key features for the tropical dry forest include that it is warm year-round, it has a long period of rain followed by a long period of drought. The drought, of course, is the word used for a dry period. Animal life in this biome is highlighted by animals during drought will go into what is called estivation. Estivation is kind of like hibernation, except estivation is a long period and and activity due to lack of water. So a new term for you there. The plants in this biome tend to be shorter and lose leaves during the dry period and plants that lose leaves are called deciduous. So these are the key features for the tropical dry forest. We move on to our next biome, the tropical grassland savanna. Two great pictures here showing the key features of the tropical grassland savanna along with the grassland savanna's uh, climatograph. Key features for the trop tropical grassland savanna are that it is warm year round, has seasonal rainfall, and what makes a tropical grassland savanna this biome is that it receives more rain than the desert, but less than the tropical dry forest. So that's what qualifies it to be a tropical grassland savanna. Some animals migrate during the dry season, while others will go into a period of estivation. And the plant life 
in this biome have waxy leaf coverings and they also have uh, plants that lose leaves seasonally and are therefore deciduous. The key features here for tropical grassland savanna. Our next biome is the desert. We're all pretty familiar with what deserts look like. They get a lot of recognition here, both in Africa and the United States. And here's the climatograph that matches up with the description for a desert. The key features here that in order to qualify for a desert, you have to receive less than 10 inches of rain per year. Though they tend to be warm year round, the temperatures vary greatly daily, being very hot during the daytime and very cold at nighttime. Most animals in this biome get water from what they eat and are nocturnal in order to avoid hot temperatures during the day. You may recognize that term to mean that these animals tend to come out only at night. The plants in this biome tend to store water and have minimal leaf surface area. And this, of course, would be um, allow them to reduce the amount of transpiration water vapor they give off to not lose water as fast. Key features of the desert biome. Next we'll take a look at temperate glass, grassland. Two really nice pictures here of the temperate grassland along with its climatograph. And the key features uh, for the temperate uh, grassland are that they have warm hot summers, cold winters, and moderate seasonal precipitation. Predation is hard on the animals in this biome, and so many of them adapt by having camouflage and burrowing. So camouflaged animals and burrowing animals are common in this biome. The plants, just as the name indicates, are mostly grasses. And the fertile soils in this biome lend to a lot of farming and agriculture. Key features of temperate grassland. Next we move to temperate woodland and shrubland. A couple nice pictures here of this biome, giving you an idea of what it looks like, along with its climatograph. Key features of the temperate woodland and shrubland are that it has hot, dry summers, cool, moist winters, and periodic fires. So you could probably already tell we're talking about places like out in California, out west would be a typical temperate woodland and shrubland biome. The animals in this biome tend to be browsers that eat various grass, grasses, leaves, and shrubs. And the plants in this biome are adapted to drought and have tough, waxy, oily leaves that resist water loss. Maybe you, later you'll have a question as to how the plants in this lend to having periodic fires. These are the key features of the temperate woodland and shrubland. Next, the temperate forest. You may also know this as the temperate deciduous forest. This, of course, is the biome in which we live. And here are a couple beautiful pictures um, uh, of the temperate forest biome and its climatograph. Key features in this biome include warm summer, summers, cold to moderate winters, year-round pre precipitation, and fertile soils. More on that in a moment. The animals in this biome adapt to changing weather and have bare trees that leave animals exposed in the winter. So this biome is hard on animal life that lives in the outdoors. Soils are fertile and rich in hummus. Hummus is a material formed from decaying leaves and other organic matter. This is what makes them fertile, as mentioned above. The plant life in this biome are mostly deciduous trees, 
mixed with coniferous trees. Coniferous trees are the evergreen trees, like the pines and spruces and firs that we have around here. But mostly we have deciduous trees that lose their leaves uh, in the fall time. These are all key characteristics of the temperate forest. Next we have the northwestern coniferous forests that we would find in our upper um, upper west of our country. Here are two key pictures showing the features of that northwestern coniferous forest along with a chlamydograph. Key features of the northwestern coniferous forest are that they have mild temperatures, abundant precipitation in the fall, winter, and spring, but tend to have cool, dry summers. Insects and ground-dwelling mammals adapt with camouflage to help avoid predation. And as the name implies, the plants are mostly large conifers, and this biome is known to have very lush, dense vegetation. Very similar to tropical rainforests, but less diverse. Key characteristics for the Northwestern Coniferous Forest. Next we have the Boreal Forest. Another name for that is Taiga. Here are two key pictures showing the features of the Boreal Forest along with the chlamydograph. And the key features for Boreal Forest are long cold winters and short mild summers and moderate precipitation. So you can imagine from this description we're talking about areas like up in Alaska. To stay warm, most animals have small limbs, small ears, and fat or downy feathers used for insulation. The plants are mostly conifers because they can shed snow, eat more easily, and they can slow water loss with their waxy needle-like leaves. Key features for the boreal forest. And our last of our 10 biomes is the tundra. A couple great pictures here of the tundra. Note the low-lying plants and the magnificent landscapes. Um, here would be the tundra in the summertime. You see some generally shallow waters. And of course, the climatograph that goes with it. Key features of the tundra include strong winds, low precipitation, short in soggy summers and long, cold, dark winters. The tundra is defined by having an area that is called permafrost. And permafrost is a layer of permanently frozen subsoil. In, summer, in the summertime, the ground thaws to a depth of a few centimeters and becomes very soggy, while the ground beneath it remains frozen. And then, of course, in the wintertime, it would freeze back up again. So that layer underneath that remains permanently frozen is called permafrost. Many of the animals in this biome migrate to avoid the long, harsh winters, while others will adapt to the conditions. Mosses and other plant life are low growing to avoid damage from strong winds. And the permafrost is also very hard on these plants because it constantly is breaking up their roots by the, the freezing and thawing key features for the tundra. Okay, that'll do it for our lesson on climate and terrestrial biomes. I'm going to give you a few practice questions here at the end of this video to do, and we'll do more uh, practice with this as we apply these concepts in class.